Hi, everybody, and welcome to History and Philosophy of Science. I'm your professor, Matthew Brown, um, or you can call me Matt, or Dr. Brown, as you like. I'm going to tell you a little bit about uh, what we're doing in this class this semester, what um, History and Philosophy of Science is, um, is all about. So um, uh, I'll uh, often use the uh, acronym HPS to refer to History and Philosophy of Science. Um, when I say science, uh, I'm uh, understanding that broadly to include medicine, uh, particularly medical research, um, a little bit about medical practice as well, um, and uh, engineering, uh, and uh, sort of research that goes into technology development. Um, uh, sometimes we might call that applied science as well. So, um, just uh, with those terms out of the way, we can start with this question, what is HPS? And, uh, you know, we can start with the acknowledgement that really what we're talking about here are two disciplines, right? History of science and philosophy of science. Um, these are fields really within uh, the disciplines of history and philosophy. Um, and uh, they are, can be, often are pursued separately. Um, so, uh, you know, there's history of science work uh, that doesn't touch too deeply on philosophy. There's philosophy of science work that doesn't depend too significantly on history. Uh, there also is a significant area of interaction and integration across these two disciplines. So, you know, the first question you might have is, uh, well, if these are two disciplines, why teach them together? Um, and I'll uh, say right up front, you don't have to. Um, as they're separate, you can teach them separately. Um, but history and philosophy of science have many shared goals, and um, historians and philosophers of science have found over uh, over time, uh, especially through the uh, middle and end of the 20th century uh, to today, that there's a lot of productive um, uh, things that happen when you uh, do these things together, right? So what are those shared goals that history of science and philosophy of science have um, that sort of motivate HPS? Well, um, both fields are trying to understand science, understand how it works, um, understand how it's uh, come to be the way it is and why. Um, both history of science and philosophy of science uh, help us think critically about the nature of science, um, the limits of science, perhaps, um, the relationship between science and society. Um, these are all things that um, uh, are sort of shared aims. Um, and so uh, I think there's a lot to be gained um, from looking at these things together. One approach in philosophy of science is fairly ahistorical. Um, it looks at primarily the results of science. So what is sort of ensconced in textbooks, uh, what you might read about in scientific journals or before that in, in major works, scientific manuscripts, um, like Newton's Prin Principia Mathematica, for example. But philosophers of science, um, since at least the middle of the 20th century, have argued that you actually get a much better image of science, a much better picture of how science works, by relying on and doing history, um, history of science. Uh, and we'll, we'll talk about that why more as the course goes on. Um, but the, the idea is that, that science as it is practiced is a little different from what ends up being reported um, in the official scientific literature. And doing the history can help us understand that. Um, it's also, it's also the case that in some contexts, um, uh, philosophical argument, philosophical analysis, philosophical questioning um, make a little bit more explicit what can be learned from uh, looking at the history than just looking at the history on its own. So there's also a way in which um, history of science or philosophy when you bring it to history of science, um, uh, helps us unpack things about science that the history by itself might uh, leave implicit or underground, right? Now, good history and philosophy of science is not just sort of philosophy of science with a little sprinkling of history or vice versa. Um, it's a really um, integrated approach, right? In which, uh, 
you know, philosophical analysis is done on science in concert with a careful unpacking investigation into the history and contemporary practice of science. Um, and that's, that's sort of the approach that um, we'll take in this class in these, uh, in these lectures, right? Um, okay, so that's sort of um, that's sort of a basic idea. Of what what HPS is? Why teach HPS as an integrated class, as an integrated field? Um, there are a number of key questions that HPS asks about science. Uh, you know, we want to know how science works. What it, what is the process of science? What is the scientific process? Um, does science have a method, and what does that method generate? Um, we might also ask, uh, how does science change, right? How does science change over time? You know, one of the main worries that people have had, uh, or questions that people have had is, is science cumulative? Does it just, uh, does it grow gradually or are there revolutionary changes? Does, does science come to, uh, reject in some case aspects of its past? Another kind of question we ask about science is, um, is, it, uh, is it objective? Is science objective? Is it impartial? Uh, is it value free? <laughs> Alternatively, does science depend in important ways on society and on our values? You know, related to this question, we might ask how much credence should we have in science? Should we trust what scientists tell us? Um, what decisions they urge us to make? What kind of authority does science have? Um, does science get at the truth? Does it get at, uh, uh, does it give us a, a real understanding of the world? When it posits uh, things, uh, 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 objects or laws that we can't see, uh, observe directly, but only infer indirectly, um, should we trust that, right? Uh, should we believe that those things are real? Um, those are the kinds of things that history and philosophy of science ask. Um, and uh, because this practice of science is so important to HPS, um, we explore those questions in direct connection with concrete episodes in science, right? Um, uh, looking at the history of science, um, also looking at the, the contemporary practice of science. Um, now, these are not just abstract questions. These are questions that have a significant contemporary social relevance. And to show that, um, we'll, we'll explore a number of specific examples through this class um, dealing with research on disease and research in medicine. Um, those topics, uh, of course, um, are of interest to everyone uh, to some extent, but are particularly pressing topics in the contemporary situation in which we're all, uh, we're all you know, living through this global COVID-19 pandemic situation. Um, so uh, one of the things I hope the class will do is help you think a little bit uh, more and help you better understand uh, the, the science behind uh, everything that's happening around this pandemic and our attempts to address it, and also to think critically about that science and its role uh, in your life and the decisions that are being made by you and also on your behalf. So that's my very quick uh, uh, overview uh, of, of what we're gonna be doing in this class. Um, uh, uh, we will be looking in the first half of the class largely at some classic uh, texts in uh, history and philosophy of science and looking at some um, important episodes in the history of science. And in the second half of the class, we'll be looking more, uh, more at issues related to science and society, science and values, science and politics. That'll be the main focus of the second half of the class. Um, and a lot of really specific uh, issues dealing with disease and medicine um, medical evidence, uh, medical, you know, medical knowledge and um, the values and, and, and social issues that arise. Um, so that's a little bit about the class. I look forward uh, to um, uh, exploring these things with you. Please let me know if you have any questions um, by stopping in on the class Discord server or um, uh, leaving a comment on the video. Uh, otherwise, I'll see you in class uh, later today.